Preston and I, look, like my St. Patrick's Day shirt. <laughs> Preston and I are at Walmart. We're <laughs> shopping. We ran out of ink and paper for the printer yeah, at home. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to print off some of his and school also, papers, which is really hard to do when you don't actually have what you need to print it. So. <laughs> we're at Walmart. Well, those okay. are cute. We're also going to get some Pokemon. Um, we're not actually also going to get some Pokemon. <laughs> Preston's crazy. I don't want Pokemon. <laughs> and then after this, we're going to the library. Are you really having a tantrum in the middle of a store? <laughs> no. You're freaking eight and a half. No. Chill out. <laughs> okay, so we're at the ink. We need. First, the one that I need right here is out. So I'm having them look in the back and see if they have it. I got the black. I just need the color. I'm out of them both. You know, I don't really need the color as much. I probably could do without it. But color's just nice to have sometimes, you know? Um, yeah. So we're just waiting. If you had what? If I had more friends to play on with. Holy crap, they just made the controller. That was really cool. That's the PlayStation 4. I wonder if there's a PlayStation... Oh, yeah, there's a PlayStation 5 and 6. The Pokemon obsession is strong with that one. I don't really get it. So we just left Walmart, got some paper and ink, and Preston, it peeled me a cutie. And so he has half and I have half, and then we're super excited to eat it. And we have about 20 minutes until the library opens, so this is what we do. We watch Shaytar videos. <laughs> we have a bunch of different YouTubes that I watch. Um, the Shaytars, it's like super kid friendly. And so Preston can pretty much have free reign. He watches whichever ones he wants. But it's good. He loves it. And I love it. And it's fun. So we went to the library and <laughs> the weirdest son ever. We went to the library and we um, picked up a book that we put on hold. This one's a little bit like more juvenile for Preston. He's going to go through this in about five minutes. But um, we put it on hold a while back. So, And then we were glancing through in this book, this next book. I, awesome. um, I so far. <laughs> it's called Prisoner 88 and it's about a boy in 1885 he, who... He's 10. He's 10 years old and he... he it says on, I'll read you the cover, the front. It says, on one, it says, Back before I shot Mr. Bennett, most day was, day was, uh, was about the same. Do what Pa said, work when I had to, eat when I could, sleep somewhere, start again when the sun comes up. After I got arrested, I didn't have Pa to listen to no more. He wasn't going to prison, just me. Being that I already, uh, that I was already 10 and some I figured I could pretty much take care of myself. Anyway, I was going to wait another like year or so to have Preston read this. Um, but I just showed him the front page and asked him, I usually do that, have him read the first page of a book and tell me if it sounds interesting or not. He kept reading. <laughs> He's already on page four. We just barely left the library. Five. Page five. <laughs> we just left the library. He's only had it for like five minutes and he's already on page five so it's gonna be a good book anyway press is gonna read you the front cover part okay okay ten year old take all Jake Oliver Evans is the newest and youngest inmate at the at the Idaho Territorial Penitentiary Penitentiary oh 
1885, and it, and he's been sentenced to five years before shooting a man who had threatened his father. Alone in a dark cell at night, and ordered to muck out hog pens by day. Jake makes the most of prison life. A boy among men, he refuses to be bullied by hardened criminals and lifts the spirits of the inmates who befriend him. Mostly, though, he's just happy to be fed. When the warden forces, the one the warden, warden, mm -hmm. warden forces him to learn to read and write, Jake feels truly punished. Being uncar incarcerated. In being incarcerated is bad enough without having daily lessons. Inspired by an actual 10-year-old prisoner in the Idaho Territorial Penitentiary, Prisoner 88 tells the story of a courageous boy who finds companionship and security under the most unusual circumstances. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty cool. And he seems to like it so far, so that's what we're going to tackle. I'm guessing he'll probably be done with it by the end of the week. Just because he's a super fast reader and he enjoys reading and this book is super interesting so far. That's it. We're heading home. Time to do some school and it's a beautiful day. So we are going to go on a bike ride today. Very exciting. Okay. See you guys later. Okay. We stopped at... Uh, what's a place called Jersey Mike Subs? Can you see back there? Oh, right there. Right there. Giant sub for my husband for work. And we also got some treats. We got this for Carson. This for Daddy. And this for Daddy. And this for, and this for Preston. And now we're going to surprise him at work. Come on said it that that was weird and now we're gonna go surprise him at work he knows we're coming so it's really not a surprise but he doesn't know what I'm bringing him for lunch so this will be fun all right here we go on the freeway so you. what's your very first memory besides me waking up and then figuring out that I'm just alive and I don't remember anything do um, you have a memory of that yeah all I remember is that me waking up in my I feel uh, in my room at the old house and um, and looking around and figuring out that I have a life but I knew what everything is and stuff. But that's just, just the very first time. How old do you think you were when that was? Three. Three? Mm -hmm. So you didn't remember anything before three years old? And then after that, what's your first memory? When I was four, um, I remember me getting um, getting my training wheels off, and then been learning how to like ride a two wheeler. And I, I on my other bike, and I just rode down the steps house and asked people to play. And that's your first memory. Mm -hmm. You don't remember anything else in Utah. You don't remember our drive from Utah to Vancouver. Mm -hmm, I do. Really? I remember actually getting stung by a bee when I went outside. Anything else from Utah? I, I think I don't know if this has actually happened, but this is what I remember in my mind. Do you remember um, playing with um, our neighbors in Utah? Definitely, like in everyone, yeah. And when we were moving, I remember that we I asked if I could go and bed in this house and stuff, and you said no. And I went in anyway, and I got in trouble. Yep, you did. And then when we were le um, leaving out, we were crying because we wanted to stay. Yeah. And stuff. You went over to Bentley Lincoln's house, and you were in like a hitting phase or a pushing phase or something like that. And you went over and you were playing with them, and then all of a sudden you just hit Bentley. And his mom comes over and just grabs you and puts you outside her gate door and tells you to go home and closes the gate on you. And you came home crying. And I told you, you know, how bad it was that you were hitting and stuff and that you hurt him and you hurt his feelings and you don't do that and stuff. And you had to go back over and apologize. I don't remember that. You don't remember that? Yeah, I have my first memory um, ever is 
say, similar to Preston's, I was around three. We were living in Walla Walla, Washington, and I remember just kind of waking up one day. Um, I just woke up in the morning, and that's the very first memory I have. Um, my second memory is later that day, I found like a pearl and shoved it in my nose. <laughs> Why do kids put things in their nose? I don't, I don't know. I got it out, I got scared, because I didn't want it to get stuck, but I did get it out later that day. So that first day of life that I really remember was very adventurous. But, so yeah, put in the comments, what's your very first memory? What's the very first thing you remember in your life? Let me know, put it in the comments. I'm, I'm interested, Bobby, I wanna know. Awesome. Hi, when we are going, when we get home, we are going, we are going to get our bikes and like go out of our neighborhood, ride somewhere, and ride back when we first start feeling tired. Mostly me. And, um, then when we get home, I'm going to do some skewer. And you are going to do nothing except watch this video. So, bye. Here comes Preston. Woo! Apparently it's snack time. <clears throat> I just want to ride my bike, man. We're at a local church firehouse and this is just an undercover area. And Preston likes to ride up and down this hill. It's actually, does it look super steep from here? But it's really fun. It's really that. fun and it makes you go fast and we like to do that. So um, so now we're going to have a snack. You, since you usually like going on trips and stuff. We're going to have a little snack. Preston brought I think some goldfish and some other crackers. Super healthy. Yep. And I'm going to have a cutie. Oh, poor Hobbs. I'm gonna have a cutie orange. These are super delicious right now. So, <sighs> so we're gonna have a snack and then finish our bike ride. I think we've only gone maybe a mile. Yeah. A mile and a half maybe so far. A mile and, 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 four, and three quarters. Definitely not our six miles like we did before, but Preston's had some tired legs, so we're keeping it easy today. Maybe we'll ride again tomorrow and just kind of keep building up our endurance by just going on short rides. And then the next time just go a little bit farther. And the yeah, next time a little like bit farther. Like this one was short. So, all right, snack time. A short